Inspector General's report is now six months old, looking into possible waste inside the Department of Corrections. We got a hold of that report, took a look inside ourselves to see if anything's changed. We sat, watched, and waited for Tiger River Correctional Warden Tim Riley to leave for work. Then, just before 7, Riley rolled his state-issued Chevy out of his garage and started his one-hour, ten-minute ride to work. Riley lives in Columbia, five miles from the Department of Corrections headquarters. But every day, for the past five years, Riley's driven 71 miles up Interstate 26 out of Richland County through Lexington, Newberry, Lawrence, and Union County, then into his Spartanburg County office inside the Tiger River Prison. Riley's one of more than 20 wardens across the state, the Office of Inspector General says, who has a state-issued car and fuel charge car. For you to tell me now, six months later, uh, that uh, nothing's changed is, is, is concerning and upsetting to me. Jim Martin put together the investigative report on corrections warden car use back in January. I think it's absolutely a waste. Martin believes there's no way corrections can justify the car benefit. There have only been two disturbances in five years at Tiger River that necessitated the warden actually making that trip in an emergency situation. So when you take five years worth of commuting and the expense to the taxpayers, I think that's being a little extreme. In five years, Riley's trips, Martin figured, cost taxpayers more than $32,000, with fuel prices well above $3 a gallon. It's the same story across the state with other wardens, who also make similar trips from their Columbia homes to prisons in rural areas, areas they choose not to live in. You've got to be able to respond very quickly because the situation at a prison can get nasty very quickly and it could be a matter of life or death. Correction spokesman Clark Newsom says it's a matter of public safety that a warden be able to respond to a prison emergency quickly and in a matter of minutes. Tim Riley lives one hour, 10 minutes away. Some would say 15 to 30 minutes could be timely, but an hour and 10 minutes away. They have to be ready to get there as quickly as they possibly can because it, it can make a very, very big difference in whether or not there's a life or death situation or uh, a situation where there's damage to property and, and that sort of thing. The Inspector General's report offered other ways to get a warden to a prison quickly. The use of SLED's helicopter, a ride with a state trooper, or a SLED agent who would have to respond anyway. Six months to the day of the Inspector General's report, our evidence shows in the Tim Riley case, nothing changed. Has there been any policy change at this point um, since it, the uh, Inspector General's report came out in January? Yes, as I mentioned. Uh, a question and a weighted question in there is whether or not you intend to live in the community. We're not requiring to do that, but it makes a difference. It kind of says that, uh, is that myself and the investigator wasted a lot of time because it all fell, it appears to have fallen on deaf ears. So that in itself is a waste. Hello. 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 We asked Governor Nikki Haley why Corrections, which is a cabinet agency, hasn't stopped what the Inspector General calls wasteful spending. The governor's office never responded. The problem for the Inspector General right now, once they issue recommendations in a case, who then steps in to make sure agency heads implement those changes to be sure tax dollars are spent efficiently. We have not gotten an answer from the governor's office to that. As for the vehicle use policy with the prison wardens, that spending continues tonight. From the State House for the Raycom News Network, I'm Jody Barr.